Welcome to Eustick Road Church of the Nazarene in Caldwell, Idaho. This is the Sunday morning service. And now your speaker, Senior Pastor Brian Dyer. I'm taking you over to Luke chapter 2 today. You've already been there. Praise the Lord. One of my favorite stories out of the whole Bible stories, it's this obscure fellow, uh, Simeon. And now he's not obscure because we've talked about him twice. But uh, he's not the main character. I mean, we all think of Mary and Joseph and, and all of the other major players in it. But Simeon's story to me is just powerful and wonderful. And I just, I just love his story. Luke chapter 2. Verses 25 and 26, but I'm going to read a few passages to you because we're talking about hope today. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, you can, you can read off of the screen. I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish those passages. In 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Who through, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. And one more passage, 11, Hebrews 11, 1, you're probably very familiar with. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Father, I pray, Lord, that we would be a people of hope. And Lord, that we would trust in you and that we would lean heavy upon the arms of our Savior. I pray, God, right now that you would speak to our hearts what we need to hear. And may your word prevail, not mine, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Simeon's a powerful story. I love, I love that he was waiting on the consolation of Israel. He's waiting on the consolation of Israel. When I, when I read that, I always think, you know, you can have an expectation and you can expect something to happen. And when it doesn't happen, you can be disappointed. The Jews were waiting on something, but they weren't necessarily waiting on a, con a consoler. They were waiting on somebody who was going to come and reestablish them as the dominant force in the Middle East. They're still waiting. They're still waiting because they missed it. They missed it. Simeon was waiting on the consolation of Israel. Israel had been beaten up. They had been slapped around. They had been hurt so often. And he was waiting on the consolation of Israel. He knew all the stories of the Messiah. He would heard about it. And when they talked about the Messiah, they were looking for a military leader. Somebody who was going to come in and dispel and dispatch all those Romans and put those Jews back in charge again. So he was waiting, but he was a just and devout man. He was willing not to just wait for uh, what he thought should be uh, God's Messiah, but whatever it was going to be indeed. And he was committed to the work and the will of God in that capacity. You know, when I think about hope, I think, um, you know, that there's, there's a, two kinds of hope. There's a real hope and there's a false hope. When you're hoping for something that's not going to happen, it's not as, it's not as a, a, a fun a time as when you're hoping on something that does. When you're, when you're anticipating things that are positive, your attitude, your disposition is different. The, faith is the substance. I, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have a hope, but then it kind of gives birth <laughs> to faith. Faith proves out. You got a hope. That's, your, that's your, what you're thinking out there. And, and then the hypothesis is proven, and you have faith. You know, was, but the hope is just the pie-in-the-sky idea, and when it comes true, then you have something bigger, you have something stronger, and that's when you have faith. So I, I thought, you know, uh, now by the faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. But I thought, we sometimes don't have the right kind of hope. Our hope sometimes is a false hope. It's something that's self-generated, that's us focused and we have the wrong attitudes, we're committed to the wrong things, and we're not thinking right. Sometimes the situations and circumstances around us can be devoid of any, of any real uh, cause for hope. I thought about these guys here in South Korea. 
you, I don't know how well you can see it, but on the left side here, the before, it shows these people walking down the street. You see that? And, and they have this new paint that they use on their roads, and it's hydrochromatic, so it's colorful when it's wet. And so um, during monsoon season, the people get really depressed and they get scared, they get frightened. The circumstances around them tell them that there's no reason. You guys remember when we have those uh, uh, temperature inversions here? You remember a few years ago we had that one that hung out for, I don't even know, it was like a month? At, by the end of the month, it was horrible. I mean, you get up every day and you can't see outside. I thought, man, I moved to London or something, the fog here. It's so horrific. And after a while, it starts affecting your mood. You just get up and you're in a bad mood. You walk outside, foggy, can't see nothing, slam the door, go back inside and yell at the kids. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just, after a while, you just get into this nasty disposition. In South Korea, they get that way with the water. So now you can see on the left, they've got these, these streets just all, all just normal black color, just, and then when it gets wet, you see that it's all colorful on the right-hand side. They have wanted to change the attitude and the disposition behind it. I thought, you know, when people look coming into this type of season, people often get, some folks, I don't know, probably all of us, if I said, how many people have lost somebody in the vicinity? When somebody, you had somebody die and it was near Christmas or Thanksgiving, almost everybody. Okay, now, here's the question. Ready? How many of you had somebody die near Canadian Box Day? What? My grandmother died on Canadian Box Day. We haven't celebrated it since. It ruined the whole holiday. Do you see what I'm say saying there? Is that we have an expectation that the holiday season is going to be joyful. It's going to be all of these wonderful things. So this expectation is there that everything's are going to go. It's going to go. Thanksgiving, Christmas, we have this hyped up ex expectation. We have this hope. But then that hope can sometimes be shattered by something else. And we have a further distance to, to fall. You know, on Columbus Day, you know, what did you do for Columbus Day this year? Did you have a party? Did the family all get together? We're going to celebrate Columbus Day. You didn't do anything. You went to work. You put on your socks. That was your celebration of Columbus Day. You know, you had nothing. And if you had a loss that was suffered on Columbus Day, you didn't even notice. Why? Because you didn't celebrate it in the first day. You went, ooh, it's Columbus Day. Look at that on the calendar. That's what your whole celebration of Columbus Day was. But on Thanksgiving, you have a different idea. Your hope is higher. I hope your hope is higher. And on Christmas, man, that is our hope for eternity, that our Messiah has come. So that's a larger expectation. So we have these bigger, more grandiose ideas. And that's okay. It's not necessarily wrong. But we have to understand that it has to be a living hope. I thought about that one. Then in uh, 1 Peter, it says that we have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And I thought, what's the difference between a living hope and a dead hope. You know what I think it is? I think when something's alive, you can tell. You can tell. I think that it should produce results. It should have an impact and a difference in the way that we approach life. The difference in the way that we do everything. Because we are hopeful. It's a living hope. It changes the way that we think. The way we think is more optimistic. We're more we're just more positive by that. When I was in the Navy, I got an award. I like to point this one out. It was my, um, uh, I, 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 I got it, and on the, we, when we went out to sea, our evaporator broke. When we were headed out to sea, the evaporator broke. On a submarine, you, you, only, you don't have very much water, so we run these evaporators to make the water. And so um, we had an 8,000 gallon per day water maker. And so we had to have this thing running, and it broke. And um, uh, this, we had a bunch of people trying to work on it. They couldn't fix it. I went down, and I got lucky, and I dumb locked into how, why it wasn't working, and I fixed it. So, um, uh, so I got an award, and, and the captain cited that that was the reason. But nobody on the boat believed him that that was the reason I got an award. It wasn't the award. People called it my good humor award. That's what they called it. Me and a buddy of mine were sitting in lower level. And we said, man, we, we left 
um, either one or two days before Thanksgiving. I can't remember anymore. I think it was just the day before. So I think we left on Wednesday. Thanksgiving was on Thursday. So especially the married guys, not happy. Not happy. They were just angry. Um, just, just they were going to be away from their families for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so they were just a lot of people on the boat in a really, really, really bad mood. And so we were sitting around, and, I, and uh, me and his buddy Mark, and he says, we're talking about our Thanksgiving. He said, you know what I'm going to miss? And I said, what? He said, man, I'm going to miss the football games. He said, me and my family would sit around, we'd watch football. And I said, well, I was never much into that. But you know what I miss as a kid? We always watched the parades. We always watched the parades. And then we sat there talking and just, just kind of visiting for a little while. And he said, we should have a parade. And he said, he said, what? I said, we, we should have our own parade. I said, he said, uh, Duff, uh, two guys don't make a parade. My, my, my nickname was Duffy. And I said, uh, I said, we could get James. And he said, three guys don't make a parade. And I said, let me call him. So I called my buddy James. I said, James, you got to get down here. I got to tell you an idea I have. And he came down and I said, let's have a parade. And James was a lot different than Mark. He said, that's a great idea. And so the two of us decided we were going to have a parade. So we started calling other guys. Hey, come down here. We're going to have a parade. So um, there were 100 guys on the boat. By the time we were done, we had 27 guys in our parade. That's pretty good, huh? So we made, we made up our costumes. And we had uh, one guy took, we had this real heavy foam that you insulate uh, condensers uh, with that, that we used in the uh, uh, when a steam plant uh, the steam blows down through there and you have these heavy condensers with this real thick foam that that makes perfect Mickey Mouse ears that you know I mean it's, it was amazing and then my buddy James he uh, he dressed up he was the best I mean I did I, I used the trash disposal um, uh, mesh netting and I was the Indian you know, um, that was my chest plate, you know. And then he used an anti-contamination suit. They're bright yellow. And if you take paper towels and rip it up on them and you tape it to the chest and then put an orange, uh, uh, orange glove on your head, perfect turkey. <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, we, we, we had pilgrims. We had football players. We had everybody coming up with these impromptu costumes. And then we marched through the boat. You know, and we had our drum and bugle guys in the back, you know, so we had the band playing, you know, I don't even have any idea what music they were making, but there, and we had another guy on a drum, so, so we walked through the boat, and then we go up, and we walk around the periscope. You know, I mean, I mean, we, we go up into the officer, officer's quarter where we hit the end. There wasn't room to, to like, actually turn around. So everybody had to just turn around, you know. <laughs> and then we marched back through the boat. And so um, in spite of the fact that um, people said that I got an award for one thing, that was what everybody said. That was your good humor award, Brian. That, don't, let, don't let the Navy tell you any different. That's what I got that for. But... The fun thing about that is our attitude is so much different because of the optimism that we have in Jesus Christ. No matter what the circumstances around us might be, whether things are good or whether they are bad, we as Christians have a hope in the resurrection, a living hope because of the resurrection of our Savior. And that prevails over every circumstance. And even when things are yucky or when, or when stuff is tough, I don't remember where we were at, Nancy, and somebody, the, the lady said, well, you can just feel the tension of, of, of the holiday season rising. And I just thought, what a terrible, accurate concept. You know, <laughs> I wish it weren't so, you know. But we as Christians have a reason to have a living hope. It's who we are. Psalms 31, 24 says, be strong and take heart, all you who hope. In the Lord but our hope has to be in the Lord it has to be founded on him it has to be uh, significantly set and then it produces that faith that gives us the results that we're looking for and I, I wanted to share this trick I did it a year ago or such but I think it's just such a fun one that I I, uh, um, I thought you'd like it again if, if, uh, if you don't just close your eyes hum to yourself nobody it's quietly please okay uh, but I have these two coins. I have an English penny and an American half dollar. Okay? The half dollar is slightly larger than the penny. Most of us aren't familiar with English pennies. But I've got one. And it's slightly smaller than the American half dollar. You'd like that. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I wanted Brianna to help me with this trick because, um, because I'm, I'm mentoring her. She's going to replace me when I'm dead. <laughs> Not yet. I don't like so, it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to take these two coins here, okay? And, and I'm going to put them in her hand. Put your hand out. I'm going to put these in her hand. And now hold it out away from you. I don't want, okay, I put the two coins in her hand. Now, uh, Shane, would you come up and help us? Okay, I thought it'd be fun to have him because he's. This is his first Sunday, so that's what you always like. Is is when, when somebody comes to church for the first Sunday, it says in the manual to make sure you bring them up front, and embarrass them thoroughly. So, um, okay, what I want you to do, Brianna, hold on, is uh, Shane, put your hand out. You're going to take those two coins from her. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. Close your hand. Okay. Now put your hands behind your back and separate them. One coin in one hand, one in the other. Okay. Have you done it? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, one is bigger. That's the American half dollar, and then the, uh, the, the English penny will be slightly smaller. Okay, Brandon, you can sit down. Thank you very much. Wonderful. And then, uh, okay, so what I want to do, oh, come on, Heather, since he's your husband, you can come and help. <laughs> is, uh, so what, what I want you to do now, you can just stand beside him. I want you to take the larger of the two coins. Put your hand out with that one, would you? Just put that hand out. Okay, okay, that should be which coin? The half dollar, right. Okay. Do you believe it is? Yeah. Do you have faith to believe it is? Yeah. Do you hope it is? Yes. <laughs> Do you see that? He was very certain. Okay, now, uh, go ahead. Uh, Heather, take that out there. Put your hand out and let's see. Let's see how smart your husband is. Did he do it? You can hold it up. That, that was the half dollar. Give him a hand. He did great so far. Okay. Okay, so that means that the... Um, that the, that the uh, English penny is going to be the next one. Oh, you know what? Ooh, I have a great idea. Would you go over there by Amanda? Amanda, would you ha hand her that bag right beside you? Go, oh, Heather, you take that for me. Okay, would you hand me that, that wooden piece that's sticking out there? Yeah, just hand that to me. Oh, this is great. I thought this was fun because uh, this is, uh, this is, is, is a, the Greek symbol of a fish. Okay, and this is, uh, this is uh, the, the Greek I, Ypsilon, a key, a theta, a upsilon, and a sigma. Okay, there'll be a test on those later, Isaiah. So make sure you remember them. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to tell you something. This is this is the I X. They're, they're not really an X. Oh, this is the, it's spelled C H I. That's what the letter, letter here is. Perfect. Yeah, and it's uh, the the G. <laughs> and this is actually this is like my name is Brian Dyer. My initials would be B D. This is Jesus Christ in Greek. So when somebody writes Xmas, it's not an X, folks. It's a Greek letter G, but that's okay. You can call it X if you want to. You just show your ignorance. Uh, so this, this stands for, that was mean, I'm sorry. I'm not very sorry, but I'll say it if it makes you feel better. Is, uh, this is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Theos, Weos, Soteries. That means, and I have to say that in Greek because I paid $7,000 a year. <laughs> To be able to do that. Now you pay $30,000 a year to be able to do that. It's Jesus Christ, God's Son, salvation. Okay? But when the words are put together, it spells ichthus. So it's an acronym. An ichthus, anybody know what the study of ichthyology is? Study of fish. So the Greek word in fish, the early Christians made up an acronym because... Um, so that like that became their symbol so like when they were hiding out from nero and stuff and worshiping down in the catacombs they would go down there and you would see a symbol of a fish that meant that the christians were meeting there isn't that cool so that's why that all of that and, and i think a fish is pretty cool because you know in the in the old testament you got uh, a jonah being thrown over and swallowed by a fish you know, and in the New Testament, you got the, uh, the feeding of the 5,000. It was the fish. And then I thought, and here's our application right now, is that when Jesus had to pay the taxes, you remember he had to pay his taxes, he went over and caught all the money out of a fish's mouth. I've thought about that for paying my taxes at times. I'm not sure most of what I get out of a fish will be that good. But this bag, this fish was in that bag. So let's reach in that bag, Heather, and find out if there's anything in there. And would you pull it out? Okay, hold that up. Hey, it's an English penny. Isn't that great? Thank you. And uh, an English penny. Now, that's, it might not be the same English penny that he was holding. A lot of people have English pennies. You know, um, a lot of people have English pennies. Not a lot of people in America have English pennies, but there are a lot of people probably in England who have English pennies. Um, but 
here's an English penny. Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? Yeah. 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 Have you ever seen one before? No. You can look at it. Okay. Okay, okay now that me goes back to you, Shane. Okay, what's in that hand? The other one. Oh, <laughs> the, the other hand. Oh, keep it closed. Keep it closed. What's in it? The English penny? <laughs> Come on! Remember that faith that you had for the half dollar? Do you have that same faith for the English penny? <laughs> Isn't that outrageous? Sometimes we have fa false hope. We can have a false expectation. But now he's just doubting himself. I mean, he saw the, he saw the two coins. He saw them going in his hands. How many of you say, that's the English penny? <laughs> you saw it. Be committed. Be brave. Be bold. Be wrong. <laughs> okay, go ahead. and let's, let's put your hand out there and, and show us that English penny. You can hold it up for him. And it's a quarter. He lost my English penny. I will take these two. You can keep that one for volunteering. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes our expectations, our expectations might not meet with reality. We can have an expectation of something. We can have faith to believe something and we can be wrong. If our faith is in the wrong thing, we don't have a living but a dead faith. Did you know you, it's not even severe, uh, excuse me, sincerity that makes the difference? We can be completely sincere in our beliefs and be sincerely wrong. It is important that we believe in the right thing. And when our hope is placed in Jesus Christ, not the hope of the world around us, or even a distortion of what Jesus Christ is, but in Christ alone it makes all the difference in the way that we behave and in the actions that we have. And we as Christians have the best hope, the best hope for this reason. That's the, uh, do you guys, anybody recognize that from any, any pamphlets or anything else? It, it's, 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 it's the Saratoga in Caldwell. That's the old downtown. This is what our, wouldn't that have been cool to have, have been able to have ridden the trolley car back and forth and all that stuff. I, but this, this is downtown Caldwell. I put that on there because it was a hotel. Nancy and I went to uh, Portland one time on vacation for uh, some kind of a gathering or something. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure it was something very holy. Is, uh, uh, but we went over there and we didn't make any reservations. I thought when we get there, you know, it's a big city, lots and lots of hotels. We'll just go in and find us a room at a place. We've traveled a lot. We'll just do that. So we got over there, and I don't even know if there was anything special going on, but you know, we started searching. We went over there to, and we went to the first hotel, and there was no room at the inn. I felt like Mary and Joseph. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, I should have told him, my wife is pregnant, listen, we need a place. But I didn't. I just said, I said, you got a place. And they said, no, you know, and, and they, I went on, we went to another place and there was nothing. Went to another place. We went from hotel to hotel all over the place trying to find a place where there was an opening. And all of the places were full. We finally wound up at like the most expensive hotel you know, it's like, it's like when we go someplace, we always like to stay with the one with the swimming pool and the hot tub. And, you know, down, downstairs you can go down and swim and play in the uh, hot tub and stuff, just hang out. This one wound up being more expensive than any others, and it had nothing. We might, I mean, I was like, it didn't even give us a bagel in the morning. I mean, I was like, I was like really? You know, and, and, and it charged more. I was so disappointed. So when we travel now, one of the things we like to do is make reservations in advance. I learned that lesson. It wasn't that hard of a lesson. It was a hard learned lesson, but it wasn't that hard to learn. I just had to do it that time and said, hey, better to have reservations than not have reservations. Guys, we have hope because we have reservations. We have our reservation in glory. God is waiting for you. There's a place that Christ has already prepared for you. Christ said, I'm going ahead and you coming along behind me. Your reservation is already made. That's the reason that we have hope. That's the reason we can endure all kinds of hardships, make all kinds of sacrifices here, and they're not even sacrifices because we haven't bought into the values and the systems this year. We got something better coming down the road. Don't invest all of it. Don't, don't eat everything that this world serves you up. Glory to God, you know you just came through Thanksgiving. You didn't eat everything you could. You said, I'm eating this turkey, and I'm going to stop now because there's pumpkin pie coming that is really great, or maybe pecan pie, even better. Whatever it was, you said, I'm going to save some room for dessert. I'm not going to buy in completely to the main meal because I've got a commitment to something else. God bless you. You are clever. Don't buy this meal. 
Don't buy everything that this world serves you up. It's not all good for you. It's not all for you. Most of it's not. Because we have reservations. We have a better thing coming. And that's the reason for our living hope that changes our lives because we believe in our Savior and the difference and the impact. It's just a natural byproduct. God bless you. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, I praise you for this day, and I thank you, dear God, for all of your blessings. I pray that you would help us, Lord, to walk in the salvation that we have, that we would live that out. Father, that it wouldn't be some tedious task that we have to undertake, but God, that we would allow you to transform our lives, that we would be people who live beyond the hope of the grave. God, I pray that our lives would reflect that. I pray that the world around us would be able to see that there's something else going on in our hearts. Guide us this day to follow your will in all that we do. We give you the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. Oh. Thanks for joining us today. You can find Eustick Road Church of the Nazarene on the web at eusticknaz.org and on many social media sites at Eustick Naz. Thanks, and God bless.